Hi, Yoda here, and today I'm going to show you how to bathe a webkins. In preparation, I have already filled the tub, and you might be able to see there are already studs in it, so I've practiced a bit doing some other baths. And I've put my camera in a um, plastic bag because my camera's not waterproof. So that makes it help. Okay, so to the most basic thing you need to bathe the webkins is, well, a webkins. And so the first thing you want to do is get that webkins wet by putting it in water. And get it really soaked. And make sure it's completely wet. Like this. Not why you can see it's kind of... You might be able to see that it's dripping. That's a good thing, for right now anyway. And so, after you have your webkins well soaked, you want to squeeze some of the water out. Don't squeeze out all of it yet, but squeeze out some of it for now. And put your webkins somewhere that they won't fall back into the top. Right now I'm just putting it on the edge. You could also do this in a sink too, if you wanted to. Oh, uh, one second. <coughs> okay. And if your webkin strips like that under the floor, like mine, just put a towel there. And the first thing you want to do is grab some shampoo. A lighter colored webkins, it's better just to use a clear one, like mine. But any shampoo will work as long as it's this one. Open the shampoo bottle and put a good amount of shampoo in. I know some people say a quarter size. But honestly, I think the more you put this, as long as you don't put too much, like something like that would be good, probably. And then, oh, put the shampoo onto your webkins, spread it around like this. And just spread it all over and cover everything, like even under the ears if you can. Yeah, and if you need to get more shampoo, um, that's good. Just put some more on if you need it. I might need some here. But you just get your webkins all lathered up. Here. Okay, I'm going to need to grab a teeny bit more here. But that's basically the stage. So after that, we'll be rinsing. Okay. So now your webkins has been fully soaked here, and if you squeeze, you should be able to see the soap coming out. And so now you put it in the water and just squeeze as much of the shampoo out as you can. So just keep going like this, just squish them a bit. I know it may seem a bit cruel to squish your webkins, but honestly, it's either you squish them now or they mold later. So, yeah, I would prefer squishing them now than having my webkins mold. I don't know about you, but that's how I would approach it. And so then you just keep squeezing the shampoo out until it's mostly gone. Okay, so now your webkins has been had all almost all the shampoo rinsed out of it and if like me you were reusing a tub that already has a lot of soapy water in it you can just um just run the water and put your webkins under it and just wash them that way and that works for a sink or a tub or whatever you happen to be using and most people would say that now is the time for the drying stage but i've found that um, after you bathe it, if you just dry them right after you rinse the shampoo out, they actually lose some of their softness. And I mean, who doesn't love a soft webkin? So, I'm going to use some conditioner. And for people using white webkins for bathing, try not to use colored conditioners or shampoos, just because I haven't had that experience, but I think it is mildly possible that it could dye your webkins a different color which would not be good unless you're purposely trying to do that. So, now you would just pour out some conditioner. I'll show you how much I'm using. I tend to use a lot of conditioner for stuff like this. So, at least this. I know it looks like a lot, but trust me, 
a lot goes a little way in this case. So just scrub that all over your weapon. So just like put it on its back or something and just work it into the fur just like that. And then you want to do that on the back and the legs and anywhere on your everywhere on your webkins pretty much. And so you just get them all lathered up. Now your webkins is completely lathered in conditioner from head to paw. And so now you just put it back in the water and rinse it again. And I know since this is just a video you can't feel it, but while you're doing this with your webkins, you should already notice immediately a softness difference. It should be at least a teeny bit softer, if not a lot. This is really great for old webkins. I did one of my other webkins earlier that I've had for almost two years, and she's a lot softer, even though she hasn't completely gone through the complete process yet. So you would just keep going around like this, and I know the squeezing seems cool, but trust me, it saves the webkins in the long run. So, just continue squeezing out the conditioner, and it's okay if you don't get it all out, but you want to get it mostly out, just like if you were washing your hair. So then you just want to continue rinsing your webkin. Rinsed all the conditioner out of my webkin in the tub, and then I squeezed out as much of the water as I possibly could in her fur. And next comes the drying stage, which may seem a bit different to you, maybe a bit similar, depends on the videos you've watched. And so you just, um, well first of all, you um, take your towel and you wrap them up in here. Now your webkins has been rubbed down, but the drying does not end here. There are two more steps to the drying process. I will show you the next one, and before you even begin to say that, oh my gosh, that's so cruel, how could you do that to your webkins? This is one way to help it not mold. So you roll your webkins up in the towel like this, and you step on it or sit on it. I know it's re it sounds really cool, but out a lot of the water. So you just do it like this and demonstrate. I'm just going to show you that you would just, um, I'm wearing Crocs, but you could do this barefoot too. You just get, you just start stepping on it. I know it sounds really cool, but it gets out a lot of the water. And you can also, you can also sit on your webkins like I am right now, and just, you'll probably be able to feel that it's just, you're getting a lot of the water out, even though it looks really cool. So after that, after you finish drying it off by either standing on it or sitting on it, you take your webkins out of the towel, just give it another rub down, and then I will show you the, well I won't be able to show you, but I'll tell you the next day. Okay, the next part in the drying process is what most people tell you never to do, which is to put your webkins in the dryer, which I agree, do not put them just plain in the dryer. You have to put it on a rack in the dryer that will not move and tumble, because it's the tumb tumbling that ruins your webkins. So if you put it on a um, shoe rack or a sweater rack or some kind of rack that won't move in the dryer, you could ask your parents about that. Um, see if you have one. That's the best way to continue drying. Some people say to um, leave them out for a couple days, which can work. It's just there's more chance for them to mold. So I just put my webkins in the dryer on a sweater rack that doesn't move with the dryer. So they just stay without moving the entire time and they just get dried. So that's the best way to do it. So this was showing you how to do a bath. So.